My name's Juan Romero, this is Switchwatch, and this is our review of Horizon Chase Turbo. Let's get into it. Outrun Lotus Turbo Challenge. Oh my god, that intro. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, moving on. And Top Gear are some of the games that I loved back in the day when I owned my Amiga, Sega Genesis and SNES and still have these games in my mum's loft somewhere. Every time I think of these races, I get a hit of nostalgia. Some wonderful times. It reminds me of when I was a teen wearing my feeler trainers and those god-awful shell suits which were so in back in those days. Some things are surely left in the past, but is Horizon Chase Turbo a homage to the 16-bit era of racing games worth a revisit, or was it better left in the past? Let's check out the gameplay and find out whether it's worth your time and cash. In terms of gameplay then, the racing game is one of the simplest racing games you will ever play. Hold the back right trigger and you accelerate and for the most part of the game you won't even need to press the brake button. Just letting go of acceleration is enough to navigate those corners, at least early on anyway. And a nice little boost comes in handy from time to time when you need to overtake in those last few seconds. The rest is about steering left and right when the corners come up and boy do they come up fast. Blink and you'll be performing a couple of somersaults once your car hits a signpost. Avoiding cars to overtake them is going to be the thing that frustrates you the most though. Hit a car in its rear and you're going to lose some valuable seconds and those seconds really do count here. You see not only are you going to probably finish outside the top three but you're going to look bad against your fellow racers all posting their times on those online leaderboards. Some of the reviewers I like to watch myself were beating me and that just gave me more motivation. Dreamcast Guy and Metal Jesus, I saw you up there. I'm coming after your time. So a shout out to Glenn and Mark over at Switch Up. Glenn, buddy, I beat you on this race, but I'm sure you'll come back at me. See you soon. Each vehicle you can choose has its own range of stats from acceleration, steering, and even fuel. Yes, you can run out of fuel in the races themselves and I was delighted when I beat my brother-in-law a good few times because he was only a little bit too happy when he was ahead of me only for him to run out of fuel. The banner was just too much for me though when I rushed past him and waved loser as I did. Wiped that little smirk right off his face only to then go and blow it and run out of fuel myself and for the banter to obviously continue. Collecting coins on track and finishing in the top three and completing the race itself with as much fuel as possible all contributes to how many coins you acquire to unlock more cities which there is an impressive 48 of them along with 109 tracks, 32 cars, 12 cups and 12 upgrades which you can put towards your vehicles. Couple all of this with four modes, which includes World Tour, which I was hopelessly addicted to, Playground, where there are a number of live challenges, which will be updated regularly so you can continue to set times on the leaderboards, and you also have Endurance Mode and Tournaments. Now the racing feels really intense and enjoyable, if somewhat also frustrating at times, but it's not overly so. The great thing about the game is there is always something that just pulls you in for that one more race. If you need more coins to unlock more cars, yep, one more go. Need to beat your mate as he just beat you, you guessed it, one more go. You need to post a better time, yep, one more go. And it's all underpinned by a really fun game and for me, that is what it's all about. The most fun I had though was playing against a friend in split screen. Hours just whizzed by as we took on the world tour and after each race goes by, both players are then able to post their scores online, which is great. Split screen even works up to four players locally, although I was only able to test this with one other player. Split screen also works for the most part really well and is especially good on the big screen. Much harder on the Switch itself though, as the real estate is just a little bit too small. 
Now the audio in this game is quite brilliant. The developers at Quaris made a fantastic choice in bringing the sound designer Barry Letch, who worked on such games as Lotus Turbo Challenge and Top Gear. The music's that type where it's just nice to listen to when burning rubber. And I found that the audio here was pretty great. I enjoyed it a lot. Visuals and performance, visually the game uses that low polygon affair which has been used in other Switch games like Polygod for example but here it seems to fit really well with its bright colours reminding me of those times I used to fire up Outrun and imagine I was racing into the sunset. I just loved the feeling those games gave me at the time and it's replicated really well here. Mix in that modern touch and the visuals and audio match each other perfectly. The looks is not to everyone's taste and there is some stutter from time to time which is a little bit of a shame but it didn't hamper the experience too much. In terms of value you're looking at around the $20 mark, I think it's worth the money. The game is so much content and has something for everyone. The only thing they could have included was an online mode where you could actually race against others online and the package would have been complete. But as it is, racing against ghost cars will have to do for now. The replayability comes from going back to each track and trying to finish first as well as collecting all the coins, the petrol cans and to perfect them and lock all the cars and modes. In terms of my verdict then, as I said in my introduction, some things are better left in the past but this game brings back those racing games which I loved back in the late 80s and early 90s and gives it a bit of a modern boost. Plenty of tracks, cars and enough modes all brought together with decent visuals and a quality soundtrack which will hit you with nostalgia like a slap in the face. Most of all the game is simple but fun and anyone can pick up and play. A very addictive 8 out of 10. Now guys and girls if you enjoyed this review please hit that thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it hit that thumbs down. I have a specific request for you. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what your favourite racing game was of the late 80s and 90s if you can that would be great and I'll do my very best to respond to you. For all of you new watchers out there hit that subscribe button for more reviews like this one. My name is Juan Romero from Switch Watch and I'll see you again very soon on the next one. Take care.